Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile, and today, we're talking about aliens. Oh no, I hope it's not Mac and me. No, little buddy, that movie is actually terrifying. Ooh, are we watching? My stepmother is an alien? Oh, yeah. No. A different Kim Basinger movie? No. Well, why the hell not? No One Will Save You is a science fiction horror film directed and written by Brian Duffield, known for writing the babysitter movies on Netflix. This film is unique because there's only one clear line of dialogue during its 93 minute runtime. Our heroine only says like eight words. Meanwhile, the lady next to me in the theater talked the whole movie. Evil. This was a Hulu original. There was no theater. The person talking the entire movie was you. Oh, uh, yeah. Then who did I throw in the river? What? What? <sighs> Filmed in Louisiana, I saw absolutely no promotion for this movie at all. It dropped on Hulu on the 22nd, and there's been a buzz online ever since, thanks to word of mouth. For instance, Rusty Joe gave it 10 stars, calling it an unexpected gem, while Throat Goat 69420 gave it 1 star, asking if the main character was mute. Maybe they sat on their remote. So, what the hell is No One Will Save You? And should it abduct your attention? A young woman named Bryn is a seamstress still living in her remote childhood home. We see her mourning the loss of her mother and her childhood friend, Maud. She copes with these losses by writing letters and constructing a model town in her living room. Does the little cemetery have a grave for Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. A past event appears to have turned the entire town against Bryn, so she leads an anxious, solitary life. You could say she's been... alienated. Back up. One night, Bryn awakens to discover an intruder in her home and quickly realizes the intruder isn't Billy, the collector, us, or even the wet bandits, but a thin, gray-skinned, big-eyed, fathead. Straight from planet? What the fuck? That's right, it's a home invasion movie with aliens. And not the candy-loving drag queen kind, like an E.T. The lights flicker and objects move on their own. Bryn attempts to escape, but is stalked by the intruder. When the alien uses telekinesis to subdue her, Bryn is able to counter and defeat it. When in doubt, go for the head. I found it! Without their heads, they're powerless! Bryn now finds herself in a cat and mouse chase with a host of extraterrestrials who threaten her future while forcing her to deal with her past. Little do these aliens know, she has experience killing. It's signs meets the strangers meets invasion of the body snatchers. The film effectively and quickly sets up this world before plunging Bryn into 90 minutes of non-stop escalating action. How I would describe my sex life. <laughs> Caitlin Deaver plays Bryn and easily carries the film while facing the emotional and physical challenges of the role. With no dialogue, she has to tell the story with her face, and we read everything she's going through. And here I thought the damn subtitles were broken. 
an agoraphobe, Bryn Spencer Day making dresses, building dioramas, cooking, dancing, and writing letters. Bryn is a resourceful character. When the aliens invade her home, she plays it smart and forms a plan. The filmmakers creatively use the house and its spaces to build the tension, like when Bryn is trapped between the counter and refrigerator. My favorite place to hide and eat all the Dunkaroos. As the aliens escalate their attacks on the town, Bryn's painful past is slowly revealed. She's intelligent, and we want to root for her, but at the same time, we know she's done something bad. Her mailbox is dented, the mailman even throws her packages. She waves to people in town, and they ignore her. When she bumps into Maud's parents, the mom spits in her eye. And then the priest came over and gave her a front wedgie. It's obvious that Bryn is blamed for Maud's death when they were 12 years old, but we don't see the full picture until the finale. Should Bryn be forgiven? Should she have redemption? Should she open an Etsy store? Some interesting questions and themes are introduced, but the movie tells us no one will save you. You have to save yourself. You have to forgive yourself. In the end, her tragic memories are uncovered, and she gets to live in her own personal diorama. The lack of dialogue is done for artistic reasons, but at the same time, it makes sense, because Bryn is by herself the majority of the movie, and when she does interact with people, they don't talk to her. Well, if they did, they'd know she's killing again. The score by Joe Trapanese is unnerving. And although there is only one line of dialogue, that doesn't mean the movie is silent. The film features an impressive sound design full of otherworldly noises. It was done by Will Files and Chris Terhune, known for the Predator prequel, Prey. The home invasion occurs in the first act, and every floorboard squeak and pitter-patter of alien feet makes your body tense. My butt cheeks could have turned coal into coal with shit on it! The house also plays an important role in the movie. Her late mother's home has a vintage aesthetic. You think it were the 50s until Bryn leaves the house. She's built this safe little bubble for herself. And bubbles are meant for popping. Without exposition, the design team filled the house with clues for the audience. The childhood photos, the letters to Maud, and the diorama of the town, made out of birdhouses, reveals a lot about Bryn's past and where she ends up. Is Bryn dead? Is she dreaming? The obscure ending leaves it up to interpretation, and there's enough material there to suggest everything. It's a bleak ending, but unlike her neighbors, the aliens gave her a second chance. They have a lot in common. Outsiders treated like monsters. Caitlin Deaver delivers a complex and bewitching performance as Bryn, who fights for her life as she grows in front of our eyes. Honing her skills as a killer. The horror elements are effective, and while the rules for the aliens aren't clear, they don't have to be. These beings may look like your classic 50s alien, but they are foreign, and not everything will make sense. However, a weakness for our heroine to exploit would have been a nice discovery. If going for the brain doesn't work, burn them! The movie was shot by Aaron Morton, the cinematographer who shot 2013's Evil Dead. The visuals are impressive, but I would have been more terrified if the aliens weren't shown so quickly and 95% CGI. I wish the filmmakers would have kept the grays in the shadows a little longer. Why hide? To them, we're ants. With a budget of $22 million, this probably could have been released in theaters and done okay. But I guess Hulu needs content. 
All we got this year was the comedy, Boston Strangler, and the horror film, Vacation Friends 2. So, should you see, no one will save you. Yes, it starts as an alien invasion thriller, but evolves into an interesting character study. I would have loved if the entire movie only took place at the house, because the rest of the movie doesn't recapture the excitement of the first act. The film is a 90 minute chase sequence that would probably work a little better as a 60 minute episode of The Twilight Zone. No One Will Save You isn't flawless, but is bold, creative, and the ending will get the audience talking. Like how the government can't hide it anymore. Aliens are real and coming for us. They did just find those bodies in Mexico. But I thought that was a cake. Wake up, sheeple! They're coming to probe us! Unless I probe them first! We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time. <laughs> ah, see? I knew they were coming! At least buy me dinner first!